Hi friends! Today I'm going to talk about what makes you a better product designer or a UI UX designer. You see, the key difference that separates you from other mediocre designers out there in the world is that you are able to question why are you doing what you're doing and you are able to think on a deeper level and not just blindly execute. If you want to blindly execute, people could pay someone from Fiverr to just execute the work. But you as a product designer, you're more than just pushing pixels. So when presented with a task, you could avoid jumping into solutions. First of all, think if the task makes sense. Ask what problem does this product aim to solve? What are the product or business goals? Understand its product market fit because these questions will influence the designs later. If the product statement isn't clear, then why design it in the first place, right? Because oftentimes when I'm presented with a problem, the problem was not really a problem. It was assumed by a business person or a stakeholder. If you don't validate the problem properly or you don't question why are we doing things this way, then we might just follow down blindly into a path where people set for us. It's our responsibility to think before we execute. The second thing that makes you a better product designer is to study great products. Great products have usually gone through a proper design process. They've already stress tested the designs by the time you use them. Some of them have done thorough research into every single design detail on the product. I never stop doing this. I never stop studying products that are at the forefront of what they do. For example, for fintech apps, I like to look at Revolut on how they build their products, on how they design their apps, their landing pages, business dashboard, or websites or landing pages. I love looking at Apple's landing pages. It never grows old. From time to time, I also go to sites like Lapa Ninja to get inspiration on how real products build their landing pages. As for Dribble and Behance, I would not recommend you to go there if you want to study how great products are built because those focus on aesthetics instead of functionality. Well, most of them. A simple act of just lifting your phone, using your favorite apps, and questioning like why this button is placed here, why are things laid out in a certain structure, and how did they map out the user flow for different edge cases. Make it a habit in you to study great products, study design details. Design details are everywhere. Even on the tool that you're using right now, or the app that you're using, or the website that you always visit. These are like subtle things that you can feed into your mind every day and naturally you will become a better designer just by doing that. So for example, on Telegram when you scroll your chat messages, the user's profile picture sticks to the bottom left until you scroll to the next one. These are like subtle design details that doesn't scream at you, it improves the experience and it delights people. So on iOS 15, Apple has decided to move the browser's header on Safari to the bottom. So when you scroll on a browser, your footer shrinks to the bottom so that you get a better full page view of your content. This maximizes the screen real estate, it optimizes the experience. The browser's header being at the bottom, it means that it's closer to your thumb, it means that you don't need to reach to the end of the screen to type in an address or search for something. Take these little design details as example, and see how you can improve them in your own design. Another way that I would also recommend for you to become a better product designer is to go paper before pixels. So if you've ever run into a creative rut or you're struggling to think of ideas quickly, ideate quickly or just map out flows really quickly, right? Instead of going directly to your favorite design tool like Figma or Sketch, so how about bring out your notebook and pen and start sketching? This allows me to brainstorm faster and ignore perfection. I'll usually start with a problem. So for example, I'm solving a problem whereby users drop off at the checkout flow. I will just map out a few flows on my notebook, decide which flow to bring to Figma, prototype it, test it with people before it goes into development. I don't pull out my pen and paper all the time, to be honest. I only do it when I need to brainstorm rapidly with just my pen and paper. Another thing that could help you become a better designer is to improve your product and business knowledge. I couldn't stress this enough. As a designer, yes, it's your job to know how to design well. It's your job to learn about the latest design trends, design details and stuff, right? But when you're designing for your product, your product is specific to the user's problem. It's unique, right? No product is exactly the same. So if you understand your product well, you understand your business well, it helps you design something that fits into the business goals and at the same time solve your user's problem. So how you might improve on your product and business knowledge is actually by experience. I don't think there's any quick hack to improving this. 
what I've done so far in the past is that I will talk to my PM more and understand the product and business goals. I will usually ask my PM like, why are we doing this? How does this fit into the bigger picture? In return, when I'm designing a solution, the solution tends to fit better into the business perspective or the product perspective. It helps me design something that presents the product's benefits more effectively. The last point I want to share in this video is to understand technical limitations and possibilities. No, you don't need to code. I will repeat myself. You don't need to code to be a better designer. If you don't understand what is not possible, then you might design something that is not realistic, not feasible, you would limit yourself in designing something in a certain way. It's your job as a designer to know what is possible and not possible. But we cannot know it all, right? And we won't be able to know every single technical limitation. What you can do as a designer is to communicate more with your developers, communicate more with your product manager. It comes by experience. There is no dictionary that you can read or a book that tells you everything you need to know about technical limitations and possibilities. A lot of observation, practice, communication, experiences of launching real products. By then, you should already have a grasp of what is possible and what is likely not possible. Reducing the uncertainties and the unknowns in your knowledge helps you become a better designer than most people out there. I feel like I could go on and on about this list on how you can improve your skills and become a better designer, right? But I believe just strengthening these five things I mentioned in the video could already help you become a 10 times better designer. To recap, start with why, question everything before you do something. Paper before pixels. When you're in a creative rut, when you need to think quickly, bring out your pen and paper. Do not complicate the process. Sometimes ideation is that simple. It's just to bring out paper and pen and just think and just sketch. Improve your product and business knowledge. Understand the business goals, the product goals, Understand how competitors are doing in the market so that you can design something that is 10 times better than the rest. Understand technical limitations. Know what is possible and what is not possible so that you reduce back and forth, you make the developers happy, and you will be much better equipped as a designer. I hope this video helps you and if you're not sure what to improve on next time, come back to this video. Remember those five things that I've just shared. Just go through them again and improve yourself as a designer. See you in the next video. Bye!